Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Malloy of Lights, Camera, Kale for Workplace Wellbeing and today I am joined by Katie Lynch of Apiary Consulting. So Apiary Consulting is a life crisis consulting company who works with executives to support them in times of crisis. And today we're going to be talking about relationship well-being. So thanks for joining us, Katie. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And I know that you actually have a background as a divorce attorney and I'm wondering you know, just looking at the current climate, what are some things that you are noticing? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I think obviously these are completely extraordinary times, which um, no one has experienced before and no one ever envisaged. Um, so there is a lot of adjustment having to go on pretty quickly. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very rare set of circumstances where all that adjustment is going on under one roof. So from a kind of workplace well-being perspective, this is, I think, the first time where it's never been more obvious that personal lives and working lives are interlinked because people are having to work from home in many, many, many scenarios, look after their own children if they have children, and spending an extraordinary amount of time together. You know, even the closest couples that spend you know, a lot of their day or evenings together there's still the opportunity to get out with friends or go to work even and have that kind of space and distance between you. So um, I think it's even for the healthiest relationships going to create a lot of stress and anxiety and, um, and there's just an, an awful lot of issues that people have to deal with in terms of kind of working out a schedule within a household that works for everybody that they've not had to do before. And I think especially in our working lives, we're not used to prioritizing somebody else's working life above our own and having kind of conversations that have to be ongoing to make sure that, um, you know, everybody's happy and functioning as well as can be. Yeah, that's a good thought. And on this note of scheduling, I know a lot of people are working at home for the first time. They're having to coordinate their schedules and set boundaries. Um, what is a good first step to take to set boundaries and then communicate them to whomever you live with? The first thing is whether or not people have children, because if there are children involved, um, then I think the first conversation needs to be to prioritize the children and get the children on a, on a schedule that works for everyone as best as can be possible. So I know lots of people right now um, with children who are used to being in school are looking at trying to get in place a kind of homeschooling schedule first. And then the kind of allocation of that homeschooling schedule and the tasks and roles then kind of flow into when the working schedule can fit around that. Um, without kids, a little, a little bit easier, but still not um, in any way without challenges. I think um, the main thing is, like you say, communication. So everybody needs to sit down and understand what's going on in each other's working lives and really understand the urgency of each other's um, tasks and to-do lists and look at um, whether somebody is, for instance, having lots of active calls during the day that they can't avoid with clients and um, with their you know, colleagues and bosses. If someone has that environment, then obviously they can't just switch their work to the evening. Whereas if somebody else has a more flexible working environment whereby they might be more used to working for themselves, they might be able to do a lot of that in the evening if it doesn't require kind of live interaction with other people. So I think it's understanding, you know, the nuances of each other's jobs, current schedules, current tasks, current urgencies, and really trying to adjust and adapt to make it work for everyone. Um, also, I think it's understanding that, you know, equality doesn't necessarily mean 50-50. It can't be, well, you have these five hours and I have these five hours because, as I say, there may be more, there's more complexity going on or it's more about finding a balance that works for everybody um, than saying, well, I'm doing these two hours, so you do these two hours. It, it, it requires a little bit more emotional intelligence um, to really kind of find the path of least resistance and, and the path which is going to make everyone as productive as possible because really that's that's what it's about is how to make room retain productivity absolutely and i'm curious you know looking at clients you've worked with looking at your own schedule can you share some things that have worked well for you 
from a personal perspective, uh, we had two very young children and um, were in a small apartment in New York and we very quickly realized that having drawn up on our whiteboard who was going to do what hours when, it just didn't work because a three-year-old doesn't understand that she can't see her parents at certain times. So we needed to adjust our living environment in order to make it um, a more positive place um, where we could kind of have a little bit more space to allow for the flexibility that we needed. Um, you know, obviously that's not available to everyone or, or an option. So um, I think you need to start to, as I say, first of all, get kids on a schedule, but then um, start to look at how the home can be used in a slightly different way. So it's about kind of creating boundaries. So what might once have been a bedroom is now, you know, the office space and it, you have to create the boundaries of no go zones because if you're all just trying to work and look in the living, work in the living room and look after the kids in the living room, that's, that's not going to work. So there's definitely a need for boundaries and consistency and, um, yeah, scheduling and rules, I would say. Yeah. And I know when a lot of people hear boundaries, we think of saying no to things, which can feel uncomfortable. So I almost like to think of boundaries as setting up positive constructs. For instance, you mentioned designating certain rooms as the place where we work. Can you think of other examples of positive constructs or positive ways to set boundaries, especially when it comes to having kids in the home? For me and, and, and for other people with kids, I think that's an important one. Like if you are in charge of the children during certain hours, it needs to not feel like a a burden or a chore you know it needs to be great this is my time with the kids and I'm in charge and so I need to make this fun for them so whether it's that you need to create different concepts and ideas for fun learning or fun play during the day you definitely need to do that especially if you're in small confined areas or even just they're used to being in their homes but that they don't understand why they can't leave you know so you need to create fun and fun um, tasks and activities for them to do at home when you're in charge. Yeah, and I know a lot of people who are struggling with this idea of how do we take our work schedule from our office and bring that into our home? Do we structure it in the same way? You know, how do we give permission to ourselves to take these breaks throughout the day and even play with our kids without feeling like we are slacking in our work? You know, I think it, you have to think of it in the same way that you have a coffee break with a colleague uh, at work. And actually, it's another thing I really think everyone needs to do. Um, I've heard lots of people saying we shouldn't call this social distancing. It's like physical distancing because we can't cut out the social aspect of our life because our mental health will then seriously um, suffer, as will our productivity and everything about the way we work. So if, introducing you know technology in order to make sure that you're having a coffee break with a colleague when you would but equally appreciating that you might have that same coffee break with your five-year-old today rather than your <laughs> but it's not time that you weren't taking out for a break anyway during your working day like we very rarely you know consistently work 100 percent from nine till five or eight till ten or eleven or whatever it you know, working hours you're used to. There's always moments when we take time for ourselves. So I think it's fine to share those moments with your kids and to try and find moments to appreciate that. You know, it's as stressful for everyone and this is hard and it's not a walk in the park, but this is a unique time that you get to spend time with, you know, your loved ones at home. And I think it's important to try and find moments to appreciate that. Thanks, Katie. So this has been Katie Lynch of Apiary Consulting. You can find this entire interview on our Lights, Camera, Kale YouTube page and on our LinkedIn page. My name's Jenny Malloy of Lights, Camera, Kale, and I'll see you all soon.